Today we're gonna to make one of my favorite things for Easter, or really anytime you want a really nice roast, we're gonna do leg of lamb. Being able to tie it is kind of important. You can do this with a bone in, a regular leg of lamb, and even if you use a bone in, you probably should still tie it too, because it does have a tendency still to want to come apart. I like a boneless because we could put a bunch of nice rosemary, garlic inside of it, and we're also gonna put garlic on the outside. It's gonna be fairly simple though, and I'll show you how to make a nice green sauce for the side, but let's get into it right now, and I'll show you how to do it all. If you have a garlic, uh, whatever it's called, a paste maker, use that or just do, do what I'm gonna show you. All right, so I'm just gonna do a little chop to start. You know, you can do this on your wood cutting board and a lot of times I do. I just don't wanna mash all that garlic into the cutting board right now. So take some salt, very coarse kosher salt, put it on top. You can apply pressure and you'll be able to make, you're gonna be able to start making a paste. It's as simple as that. Give it like a first attempt, then just do a little chop. Then go again. Kind of like with the point, you can kind of pull. And that's about two tablespoons worth, I'd say. And that's good. Maybe we don't use them all, maybe we use more. And then chop this up like decent mince. This is all gonna go in the inside of the lamb. Okay. And you know, if you don't want rosemary in here, you can use sage, you could use thyme, you can really use what you like. You wanna visually inspect all this here so you don't have any uh, of the thick stems. All right, that's good. And we'll give this a chop too. We have our rosemary, parsley, and our garlic ready. Let's get the lamb out. Basically, the lamb itself is normally like this. We're gonna turn it like this. We want it to be all the same relative thickness, so it's gonna cook at the relative same amount. Before we do that, we gotta season up the whole inside, and we wanna trim off any really like large excess fat areas. Normally, the butcher will do a good job for you. I've seen Whole Foods sell them, and a lot of stores sell them already deboned but depending on where you go, and I bought this at a local place, it looks like he did a good job, and I'm gonna clean it up a little bit more. Any like really like thick areas of fat like this, I'm gonna just remove. You don't wanna cut through this or anything, but you wanna kind of just get it prepped for, for the roasting process. All right, and that looks pretty good. While you're prepping this here, you wanna get your oven to 450 degrees. We're just gonna take all of our herbs, get them all in, and we're gonna put salt and pepper down here. The garlic paste too, just get that in there. Gonna rub everything in. This is kind of messy. You're gonna have a messy job here, but you're gonna get a lot of it inside of here. You get salt and pepper at first, it doesn't really matter. It's all gonna just be pressed in here. A good rule of thumb is you wanna do one teaspoon of kosher salt per pound. This is roughly a five and a half pound boneless leg of lamb, so it's gonna need roughly five teaspoons of kosher salt, which is a lot, it sounds like a lot. So whatever your weight is, do half of it on the inside and do half of it on the outside. And you can do all that or you can just kinda eyeball it, but you really want a lot of salt for meat. Pepper. You use a light hand and you can just shake it like this. Or you can get out your pepper grinder and uh, take 10 minutes to do it. All right, so again, it's gonna be here and then here. I'm gonna tie here first, about two inches in. And to tie it easily, all you have to do, instead of just going like this, and then when you try to tie it again, it loosens up, just go a couple times around. And now when you pull, it won't move. So you can tie this off here. And then you have, you have your first tie. So now you have it kind of in position here, and now you kind of know what you're going for. That's a regular knot that you can do. That's easy one that you can do all the way. And then I'm gonna do a slip knot now. What that is, you go underneath, and the, this string comes over like this. Hold it with your thumbs, you're gonna pinch top part with your thumb like this, okay? And then you go around your thumb twice, and then you come through 
and now you have a slip knot. And you can position a slip knot, and then all you have to do is start pulling, and it will get tighter and tighter. See that? Go down, 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 like that. And then if you want, you can do a security knot there, and you, all you're doing here is you're taking your thumb like this, you're twisting around, and you're reaching through, and you're pulling that piece through, and then you tie, and just tie it off a couple times, and now, um, now that knot won't go anywhere. So this one, I'm just gonna, I'll leave that here for after. So now again, I'm just gonna loop my hand like this. Now I have a big loop. And I'm gonna come in underneath, and about the same distance again, going to pull up and just tighten it. Okay. So there we go. We're starting to form, starting to form a nice cylinder. I'm going to basically fold this in here. This part's all going to be folded in. So, so we can essentially keep most of this, most of this uh, cylindrical shape. We'll do one more <clears throat> and then we'll come around. All right, so we have it all done like this. We're gonna turn it over. And now we're gonna come, we'll come back through here. So what you need to do is make sure, because this is connected to, this is connected all the way to this, cut off enough that you can go all the way through here. Knowing that our line is this way, we're gonna to try to go right on the other side of it here. So I'm gonna tuck this meat in, right, like that. And I'm gonna go under, and then over. And then just pull it. And now I can cinch up the end here. So you don't have to, if you have a lot of them here, you don't have to do each one. I would do like every, every other one. Under, then over. Okay. So you add how like, now I can pull it. Having it really well tied, you can, it will roast more evenly in the oven. And there's a lot of ways to do it. The first knot I showed you is very, very easy. It's just a regular knot. So right here, let's just turn it back again. Grab, remember remember I told you we had that last step piece that we wanted to leave for this reason. We're gonna be able to tie onto that. And before I do that, I'm gonna make one more tie here. I wanna cinch this up a little bit more. And now, right here, we're gonna tie these together. Okay, and I don't need all that slack, so Cut that off. And then same thing again, go once, whoops, go once and then go twice like that. And now, now you can perfectly tie it. Okay, same thing, cut it off. And now you have a really nice looking Lego lamb. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna season this all up, salt and pepper it and stuff our garlic cloves in, and then we're gonna get it in the oven. You can cut some holes like this. See this hole right here? And you put them all over wherever you want, and then you take the garlic and you just push it in there. And you're not gonna need all this garlic. So just do 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 what feels right to you, what, what you like, your, your own taste. The garlic's gonna essentially roast in here, so. It'll be a really nice flavor. I probably put like 10 little slivers in here. Okay, a lot of salt and pepper, pepper all on the sides. This is so big, I'm gonna have to try, I'm gonna put it uh, sideways. Okay, there you go, perfect. It looks really good like this. It's pretty much the same size all the way through, so it's gonna cook all together and we want to get it, we want to cook it to about 135 to 140. That's going to be a couple hours from now when it finishes. But for now, 450 degrees for 15 minutes and then lower your oven to 350 degrees.
I have mints right here. I have one clove of garlic. I have the those parsley stems from before, and then I have a whole, whole bunch more parsley and the stems. All this can go in the blender, and I'm just gonna put it in one of these little little blender cup I have. If you wanna make a lot of it, you're gonna need, you'll need you know, a full-size blender. It'll have salt and pepper, red wine vinegar. And so I'm using this Spanish olive oil extra virgin from Costco. It's a really good, it's a really good value. I don't wanna use a cup of, of my really good extra virgin olive oil, but this olive oil is surprisingly really nice. So I'm just going to put this all in a blender and it'll uh, it'll be a nice sauce for the lamb. You're going to be using an instant read thermometer the whole time. So figure roughly 20 minutes to 25 minutes per pound, but don't assume that you shouldn't be checking your meat earlier. Before you take it out of the blender, just give it a taste and then adjust any vinegar, salt, pepper, whatever. Okay. And there it is, this is a quick green sauce. Uh, I wish it was a little thicker. I if I had more parsley, I would put more parsley into it. But the lamb's gonna be so flavorful. You really don't even need this anyway, but the way I figure, well, why not make it? You're waiting a couple hours for the lamb to come out of the oven. It's just a waiting game right now. We did 15 minutes at 450, then I turned it down to 350, and it only took basically another 70 minutes. And this is five and a half pounds. Let's take a temperature reading. So by having an even cylinder, it's gonna be pretty much the same temperature all around. Let's take a, let's take a reading. Yeah, so right there, we're at 141. And you can go into, you can go into kind of the most the thickest part, which is probably right here, it's registering about 135 degrees right now, 137 now. Yeah, it's about, so this is about exactly where we want it. Got nice color on the top originally, and now and now we're all set to carve this up. Tent it with foil, foil lightly, it'll raise up another five degrees, and then let it rest for 15 minutes to let all the juices come back into it, and then give it a nice little thin uh, slice. This is gonna be our dinner tonight for the whole family. Get a really sharp knife, one of your sharpest knives. I'm going to, for now, I'm not gonna cut off all the string, I'm gonna cut off the end. We'll get a piece of the end. The end's gonna be a little bit more cooked than the center. Your center's gonna be where, where you're the most rare. Okay. There we go, that's nice and juicy. Look at that. Extremely juicy. Since I made it, I'm gonna take a bite of it right here. I'm gonna get that sauce though. I'm, I'm normally very good at estimating the exact time for my videos, when they're gonna end. So tell my family to work around it. They're not even here right now. Uh, this one this one cooked a lot quicker than I thought. That's why you gotta keep checking that temperature. And if you were just going by time, you would have overcooked it by a lot. So that is absolutely, Perfect, per perfect. I don't even know what we're gonna do for Easter because I'm making this video two weeks before Easter. We'll probably do another one. I hope you enjoyed this. Please share this and give it a like. I hope you learned something today. All my videos, I try to make more educational than entertaining, though I don't wanna bore you. Leave me a comment, let me know if you're bored or if you liked it. I'll see you next time.